Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you my December to be read pile. So I actually haven't filmed one of these uh, videos for a couple of months which was a shame because I did actually have some really fantastic books for autumn that I've been reading but now that we're in December I thought I had better show you my huge pile of books because there's so many and some of them are really lovely and I'm always on the hunt myself for really good Christmas themed books to enjoy at this time of year when you just want to get into the spirit of Christmas and relax with a glass of mulled wine and a mince pie and a nice book so I thought this would be perfect time to put up a to be read um, video. So first up, I always love a good cookbook at this time of year, especially if it's themed around Christmas. The one I usually go for is Nigel Slater's Christmas Chronicles, which is incredible. I highly recommend it. As you don't have it to hand, it's in my bookshelves um, in the hallway, but it is so charming. Nigel Slater's writing is very rich and descriptive and um, he just brings you through the whole year from, I think, mid-November um, all the way till Candlemas. And there's tons of recipes and nostalgic kind of feelings to it. And it's very beautiful. But this year I indulged in a new cookbook and it is Christmas at River Cottage by Lucy Brazier um, with seasonal notes and recipes by Hugh Ferning Whittingsall. And this book has really been such a joy to read. Obviously it's got delicious recipes in it, um, sweet and savoury, but it also has um, really nice little notes on things like decorating for Christmas, um, should I try, try and find you some bits and pieces, um, advent calendars, um, decorating, like I say, gifts that you could give at Christmas, um, what's in season, um, all sorts of like lovely little reflections on the season and how they like to uh, celebrate it at River Cottage. So a wonderful book for anyone that's a fan of River Cottage and loves Christmas. It is so good um, and I've enjoyed reading it immensely so full marks for this book. Without fail I always get a craving for Christmassy chick lit at this time of year and for me my favourite writer for that kind of thing is definitely Jenny Colgan. Last year I read Christmas at Little Beach Street Bakery which was really really good. I also listened um, to one of her audiobooks, Christmas audiobooks, but this year I picked up The Christmas Bookshop from the library and it is really good. I'm only um, probably like a fifth of the way through so just really got started on it but it's so good. It's like spot on, really Christmassy um, but not too silly. I also have actually this year, I picked up another one which was Sarah Morgan's The Christmas Escape which is a bit, I'm finding this one a little bit harder to read. I sort of, I think I'm about a third or maybe I'm halfway through and we've just got to the bit where they get to Lapland so I'm going to try reading a little bit more because I know I'll probably enjoy the descriptions of Lapland but I'm finding it was a bit, a little bit obvious I guess, like the storyline of it, I was like I know this is going to happen um, and maybe just a bit too romance based and um, I don't know, sometimes I sort of think women are portrayed a little bit sillily in these books, well you know they're not always just continuously thinking about romance so I'm not, not entirely loving that one but um, some people might so I wanted to show it but I do like the Joni Colgan one because while I'm sure there probably will be romance in this um, at the moment it's more about the character and she's built like a really good character so love that always can rely on Jenny Colgan for just the right balance between a good storyline a little bit of romance but nothing that's too silly so love that um, highly recommend her books okay and then final chiclet book that I've got to show you is A Gift in December by Jenny Gladwell um, this is about a journalist called Jane Brooke and she's sent to Norway to cover the story of the Queen of the Forest um, I really enjoyed this, I thought it was great, I read it last year and it hit the spot so um, I can recommend that one and I like the cover too, it's quite sophisticated. So um, yeah, that is the chiclet books that I um, have enjoyed or I'm going to enjoy this year. I also love to read non-fiction at this time of year as well and the one book that I go back to every year is Beth Kempton's Calm Christmas and a Happy New Year. This is such a great book for sort of finding your own joy within Christmas um, and there's lots of ideas for planning out um, your kind of like, um, I, I don't know what she calls it, it's like a, a Christmas constellation, that's it. So she has a whole thing about creating your own Christmas constellation 
which is where you map out how you would like to spend your Christmas and it's just really interesting because you find out what Christmas is to you and it gives you so many more ideas for how to celebrate it in a more meaningful way um, and there's also a lovely bit about New Year as well um, so I'm definitely going to be reading this again throughout December and I'm looking forward to reading the bit about New Year as well um, so yeah a, a really really good book um, so much is in this it's like a proper little um, jewel of a book and I adore it so this book is a very sweet book for um, celebrating Christmas with children it goes through all the different celebrations and then it has some like little poems and also some Waldorf crafts like how to do a nativity out of felt. Um, there's some songs, there's loads of recipes in this and um, it, yeah it looks at things like St Lucia Day, St Nicholas Day and it goes all the way up to Twelfth Night I think. Um, so there's some little things there so yeah really a great book and we've used this so much in our household um really really lovely and i as you all know i love waldorf so this is a real waldorf approach to christmas and it's very very charming so i love that and i always get that out at this time of year I'm wondering why i'm looking down just because i've got a huge amount of books on the floor so i'm like hmm, what book will i get next um okay this one is great as well um, there's a whole series of these books by the writer Robin Stevens and they're under the title A Murder Most Unladylike Mysteries. These are middle grade books but they are so good. This one is called Mistletoe and Murder and it's, um, I think there's two little girls in it, I haven't read this for a while, um, and they solve murders and there's a whole series of these books, you can see at the back. Um, and this one, I'll read the back of it. Daisy Wells and Hazel Wong are spending the Christmas holes in Snowy Cambridge. Hazel has high hopes of its beautiful libraries and inviting tea rooms, but there is danger lurking in Magdalen College. When a brutal accident takes place, the detective society suspect murder. Faced with fierce competition from a rival agency, they must use all their cunning and courage to find the killer in time for Christmas Day. So um, really lovely. If you like cosy um, crime at this time of year, this will hit the spot. Um, but yes, it is, a, it is a middle grade book. So it is for children, but it's very, very good. Very comforting and not at all scary. So I love this. I love a good Christmas anthology. Growing up, we used to have the, well, we still do down at my parents' house, the folio Christmas storybooks. And I loved those. I would read them obsessively as a child because um, I was so, such a fan of Christmas. Um, and all those stories really just mean so much to me. So I'm a, a big fan of anthologies and I actually must buy those folio ones as well because they're just so nostalgic to me. But um, I have a couple here to show you which I really enjoy as well. The first one is Round the Christmas Fire Festive Stories and this is put together by Vintage Classics. It's got the most prettiest cover illustrated by Emily Sutton. She's one of my favourite illustrators and uh, yeah, to be honest that's why I bought the book because I couldn't resist her gorgeous illustrations. This is sadly out of print but you can pick up secondhand copies. So these are... Uh, seasonal stories are all separated up by theme so we've got ghost stories stories about the yuletide spirit christmas diaries christmas caroling christmas with the family christmas gifts christmas dinners and last christmas um there's some of my favorites in here a christmas memory by truman capote that is my favorite christmas story hands down it will make you cry it is so charming and beautiful and just heart-wrenching i highly recommend you read that if you can, it is so good. Um, of course, there's a Christmas, Charles Christmas in Wales by Dylan Thomas. Um, there's some stories by E. Nesbitt, Charles Dickens, um, Sue Townsend, Kenneth Graham, Laurie Lee, Stella Gibbons, Nancy Mitford, um, and PJ Woodhouse. And actually, it does remind me um, here, uh, Nancy Mitford. I actually don't have a Christmas pudding. That's one of her novels that are themed around Christmas. It's in the sitting room, but I am planning on reading that this year. So um, I don't have that to show you, but just to let you know, A Christmas Pudding by Nancy Mitford is on my reading list this December. Um, and also Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. Um, while there's an extract in this book, that, that book is one of my favorite books of all time. And actually I probably will reread that this December as well, because it is just, yeah hands down probably my favorite book of all time so that's a lovely book to pick up if you still time hopefully for you to pick that up on ebay or something um and just a lovely collection 
I've had my eye on this anthology for a while, but luckily I actually found it in the library and it's the Penguin Book of Christmas Stories um, and by done by Penguin Classics. And I didn't want to buy this because it had such mixed reviews on Amazon. Um, and I think the reason for that is because there are some really unusual Christmas stories in this. And some of them I think are a little bit um, like, I don't want to use the word depressing, but you, you know what I mean. <laughs> Maybe not the most cheery Christmas stories, but I still thought it'd be quite interesting. Um, and it does contain Dorothy L says The Necklace of Pearls, which I really wanted to read. So I've read that and that was really good. Um, a bit like a mini, um, a mini Christmas uh, crime. Um, there is Saki, um, Hans Christian Andersen. There is Angela Carter, who I always enjoy reading. Shelley Jackson. Um, there's A Christmas Memory by Truman Capote in this one too. Muriel Spark. Um, Grace Paley, Laurie Lee, and yeah, Tove Johnson. Um, yeah, so lots of different ones in this. I think this would make a great anthology for a keen reader because while it might not be the most cheery at times, I think it just has such a good array of stories in it that I think this would be actually a really good read. So I'm excited to carry on reading this. Um, like I said, I've already read The Necklace of Pearls. And I really enjoyed that. So I think this is actually going to be quite a good anthology and I might, uh, might end up picking up my own copy of it. Again, another book that I don't have to show you because I've actually already returned it to the library is um, Pryro's Christmas Pudding, I think it's called, Christmas Pudding, and it's a Pryro mystery. Um, I'll link below exactly the right title of it, but that was excellent as well. It was, again, it was an anthology of Pryro stories, and the first couple ones, I think, were Christmas-themed, and that was brilliant. I started off December with that, and it was fantastic. Um, again, really good cosy crime, quick and easy to read. Um, and yeah, that really hit the spot. And then this book, it's not an anthology, but it's a really charming read. It's Lanterns Across the Snow by Susan Hill. Um, and from the back it says, from a century ago comes the memory of a childhood Christmas in Wessex, seen through the eyes of an enchanted little girl. Joy, hope, fear and sadness, the beauty of landscape and the bitter cold of winter, Lanterns Across the Snow evokes these things with a sure and knowing touch that will appeal to readers everywhere. And um, this is so lovely. It goes through Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and St. Stephen's Day and through the eyes of this little girl. It is so well written, so charming and evocative and just an incredibly beautiful read. It's very short. So again, it ties in quite well with the anthologies because it's something that you might just pick up and read in one sitting. And um, really, really lovely. Highly recommend that. So this book is so beautiful. I think this would make such a good gift as well, just with such a gorgeous cover. This is Midnight in Everwood by M.A. Kuznier. I think that's how I say it. Apologies, I probably got that wrong. Um, and first of all, really was the cover that pulled me in. Like, oh, it's so pretty. And it says here on the inner cover, let's give you the rundown of the book. Arietta Stell longs to be a ballerina but as christmas draws nearer her dancing days are numbered she must marry and take up her place in society in new in the new year but when a mysterious toy maker dr drusselmere purchases a neighboring townhouse it heralds the rival of magic and wonder in marietta's life and um, this is meant to be a retelling of the nutcracker and it has incredible reviews uh, everyone that's read it says it's amazing um, it is an adult's book it's a grown-ups book um, it's not middle grade, which I thought initially actually, and then I realised it's um, it's a retelling for, for adults, which is even better. And I have looked up the author and I, it, apparently she loves ballet and I think she does ballet, which makes me love this even more because I also love doing ballet as an adult. So um, I think I'm gonna love this. I'm really, really excited. I'm actually holding on to this to enjoy closer to Christmas because I feel like this is my like treat of the year and yeah. I'm just really excited for this one and I think again it would make a lovely gift and um, a lovely Christmas present just because it's so beautifully presented. And so that's everything for my Christmas books. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you some ideas of nice cozy books that you'd like to read for the rest of December and into January. Also record my January books as well and I'll upload that quite soon so you can get some inspiration for some cozy crime and things like that um, which I'm planning to read in the new year. Um, but yes, that's it. I'm going to go and get some lunch now. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe. And um, I will be back soon with another video.